Today we visit a hidden gem and a collector's garden's paradise and meet with their owner to talk about new and exciting plants that are perfect for your garden. You won't want to miss it, so stay tuned as we garden smart in Oregon. Seabright Gardens is located in Salem, Oregon, and is surrounded by beautiful pastoral agricultural land and is a perfect place for a host of plants to thrive. The garden was initially started in 2003 as a private garden that surrounded the house, and over time it grew into a four acre treasure trove of collector plants that draw plant enthusiasts from far and wide. Today we meet Thomas Johnson, the co-owner of Seabright Gardens, to get an inside look at the operation. Thomas was raised on a farm in Canada and has always been passionate about plants. He started gardening at the age of four with help from his mother and in time began selling plants in order to purchase more. Thomas's love of plants grew into a career in the hosta, iris, and daylily mill order business, as well as a comprehensive website where plant lovers from all over can explore new and exciting plants. Let's meet Thomas and take a walk through Seabright Gardens. Okay, Thomas, so we bought all these amazing shade plants and we're, we're launching into our garden. And of course, I want my garden to look like your garden. Everybody does, it's beautiful here. I wanna talk about some of, the, some of the tips that our viewers would want to know that would help them maximize their success as a shade gardener. Okay, well, first of all, make sure you're buying a shade plant if you're doing shade gardening. <laughs> Don't try to grow something that wants to be in the sun. And also be very aware of the lighting that you have. That's very important. Most shade plants want to have as much light as you can give them without direct hot afternoon sun. And that's highly important. And you gotta keep in mind that your sun does change throughout the growing season. So it might be a good idea to, to set a, an empty container out in a spot where you wanna plant a shade garden and watch your sun move before you actually plant it. And it may surprise you that it may be in more sun than you think it is, but sighting is very important and choosing a plant that's right for the location is probably the number one thing that you need to do first. And irrigation is also important. I think sometimes when we, when we look at a shade garden, we assume that everything is oftentimes more moist than it actually is. Yes. You think about what's, what's creating the shade. The shade's being created by these big right. trees Correct. that are also sucking up an entire, it's, yep. it's an incredible amount of water. Yep. And so just because it looks lush, you know, and shady under that tree, um, doesn't mean that there's going to be adequate moisture, especially for things like hostas and, and ferns that, that need a lot of water. Correct. Yeah, you need to make be very aware of the fact that, and as you water in that area, be aware of the fact that the tree roots are going to come towards that moisture as well, so that you may have to be uh, ob observing to make sure that they are actually getting enough water, because that's probably the most common problem where people have with shade plants, is to make sure that the, the soil is evenly moist. There are plants that, that just, um, you know, are known to be plants that thrive almost anywhere. Yes, yes, like Hakanakloa grass or Japanese forest grass. That's the one that you can plant sun or shade, so you do not need to worry about whether there's going to be a, too much sun or too much shade for that one. But a, another thing to remember also, too, is when you're shade gardening, is remember you're trying to mimic a woodland environment. So right. anything you can do to make the soil really humus rich with uh, you know, leaf mold, so lots of compost, really the shade plants really love that sort of thing. So keep your soil loose and full of uh, nutrients and they'll thrive. Right, of course it needs, it needs oxygen. That's, you know, that's where like a lot of those looser soils, adding right. in compost, you know, doing right. wood mulch all the time, yep. it yep. keeps it really light. And so the yep. fibrous roots of, of yep. many of these plants, especially you think ferns, like these really fibrous root systems, they need all of that air space in order to be successful. Right, and your comment about wood mulch uh, being the best is the best. You know, if you can get decomposed wood chips or stuff like that, that is the best. Right. Or decomposed leaves, as opposed to bark dust that basically decomposes and doesn't add much to your soil. Right, absolutely. Thomas, thank you so much for being with us today. What a beautiful, amazing place. We've learned so much from you. Thank, thank you. Thank you for coming.